Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 25th anniversary of the unified government of Athens Clark County. Uh, my name is Pat Allen and I have the privilege of being your MC today. And it was also my honor to serve as chairman of the Athens Clark Communi uh, Unification Commission uh, 25, 26, 7 years, years ago. That 15 member commission which was appointed equally by the city of Athens, by the Clark County Board of Commissioners and by a citizens group called the Quality Growth Task Force literally engaged hundreds of athens Clark County citizens uh, in not only envisioning what uh, new government could be and should be, uh, but also actually suggesting uh, specific components of the charter that were accepted and was adopted. And you know, I'll never forget the call I got from uh, the chair of the nominating committee of the Unification Commission. I'm not going to tell you who it is because I don't want to embarrass Ed Benson, but the um, <laughs> call was uh, the, the nominating committee would like for you to uh, serve as chair. And I said to Ed, uh, Ed, I'm a banker. I don't know anything about government. And Ed said, yeah, but you're still relatively new in town. You don't have any baggage. So Ed, now I've got baggage. Thank you. I think it's important to note uh, today that the idea of a new government uh, was not to fix two broken governments. Our two governments had both served us well for generations. But our community 25, 30 years ago was changing and the visionaries among us knew that uh, if we were going to be the best we could be, if we were gonna make efficient use of our tax dollars, if we won't have the right structure to manage the growth that we knew would be coming to Athens with 316 and, and the growth of the university and other things, then a new structured government would best suit, uh, have our interest in heart. Others can and, and probably will this afternoon tell you of uh, the data and opinions about how it's worked. Um, but I can tell you one thing. Over the past 25 years, I've met uh, with literally dozens of community groups from around the state of Georgia coming to ask us what we did and how we did it. Progressive governments around the state of Georgia want to do what we did 25 years ago. Well, it was 25 years ago when we were here at this exact time of day. It was exactly a day like this. There's a video of it. On this exact spot, uh, and the leaders of the Athens City Council and Clark County Commission came together to tie the knot, to, to marry the two governments into a new entity. Our mayor, we then called that person the chief elected officer, and 10 com new commissioners were sworn in on this very spot. You're going to hear from a few of those today, but your program contains a complete listings of those who've served us since unification. Uh, as you look at that, uh, please thank them, and why don't we thank them right now for their service over the years. Now I'm going to ask you to please stand uh, while members of the athens Clark County Police Department present the colors. Will you please, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you. You can be seated, please. Well, when we tied the knot 25 years ago today, the then seated Athens City Council councilors and the Board of the Commissioners processed from uh, the courthouse and city hall with long ribbons to this spot and they were joined together, tied together at the podium. We're going to reenact that today. I, I suppose it's okay to reenact historical events since we still got people dressing up in military uniforms and fighting battles that we lost 154 years ago, but I think it's okay. To assist uh, with that reenactment, uh, former mayors Cardi Kilpatrick and Doc Eldridge. Thank you, Pat, and welcome to each of you. Um, this is a great occasion, and uh, Jeff Montgomery told me I could say just a few brief words, and you know, I'm not much for public speaking, and <laughs> I've always been pretty brief. I won't disappoint you. Before we begin the procession, there are, uh, there are two groups of people uh, that I really want to thank, and I don't know that they're on the program, and they certainly wouldn't be in there in the way that I'd like to thank them. Um, first off, when I arrived at the end of the first four years, I realized what a job and task the first mayor and the first 10 commissioners had in front of them and what they had done. And I don't think we, any of us understand, unless you were behind the rail or involved at the time, the arduous task that those 10 people did to get us to a form to, to one government. It, they took two and blended it, and it was, it was quite a job. And the other group of people that I think often gets overlooked, I want to make sure that I recognize, are the staff of the Unified Government of athens Clark County. I have never seen a group of more professional people more people that made sure that every time you picked up the phone and called a, a government department, it was answered, and the service that you asked for was served. I don't care whether they had on blue shirts or ties or uniforms. They went about their business of serving the community. And there are two people that I think deserve special thanks, if not from all of us, from me, uh, who kept me between the lines, even when I might step outside the lines, uh, but there are two ladies who meant a great deal to me during my eight years of, of public service, and that is the Clerk of Commission, my friend Jean Spratlin. And as I used to call her the real mayor of Athens, my friend Mae Walters. There are some commissioners who are no longer with us. Surprisingly enough, it, it only numbers five, but I think, it, I think we, it's appropriate that we recognize them at this point. District two commissioner, Miriam Moore. District three commissioner, John Taylor. District five commissioner, Hugh Logan. District eight commissioner, States McCarter. We all be very grateful for all that those people did as well. Now, as Pat mentioned, the ribbons came on that day from the old county courthouse and the old city hall, and we are about to begin that reenactment of that procession. And so if this is what Jeff is talking about, wherever he is, let's let the procession again. And as they, as they come in and as they approach the podium, I'm going to read a list of people who have served the unified government of athens clark county in the last 25 years and those who are participating sooner or later in the you know somebody from the old city's getting ready to make a comment about this county all right Marilyn, let's go participating in the procession district one commissioner charles carter District 1 Commissioner Sharon Dickerson, District 2 Commissioner Harry Sims, District 3 Commissioner Alvin Sheets, District 3 Commissioner George Maxwell, District 3 Commissioner Melissa Link, 
District 4 Commissioner John Barrow, District 4 Commissioner Allison Wright, District 5 Commissioner Jared Bailey, District 6 Commissioner Marilyn Farmer, Dis District 6 Commissioner Jerry Neesmith, District 7 and 10 Commissioner Cardi Kilpatrick, yours truly, District 7 Commissioner Kathy Horde, District 7 Diane Bell, District 8 Commissioner Andy Herod, District 9 Commissioner Tom Chastain, District 10 Commissioner our friend Tal Duvall, District 9 Commissioner Kelly Gertz, and District 10 Commissioner Mike Hamby. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice hand for the commissioners that brought the ribbons to us. And I will turn it back over to our next speaker. You know, when they told me to come up here and sit, I thought I'd sit between Gwen and Heidi because that's where I landed in all of this. <laughs> Although I've, I've noticed Gwen's boots, and my goodness. She certainly has changed since 1990. Sit down, Doc. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honorable Heidi Davison. Welcome everybody, I'm really pleased to be here today and so glad to see all of you here with us. There are three wonderful words and expressions in the Hebrew language. The first one is called tikkun olam, and it's a commandment that we should repair the world. The second is mitzvah, and a mitzvah is to obey the laws and to render good deeds. And the last one is mensch. That's a great word, I love mensch. A person who follows the laws and the commandment to repair the world by rendering those good deeds. So here I stand before you in a very, very, very large crowd of menches who have worked diligently and with love to repair the world, our little world of Athens. And they've done so selflessly, without calling attention to themselves, and without seeking credit for their efforts. That's true leadership. And I have drawn and continue to draw inspiration from all of you and from those who are not here today. So whether intentional or not, all of you and all those who have helped us along the way in making Athens what it is, have lived the Athenian oath to transmit not only, not less, but greater and more beautiful and inspired us all to do the same. Several years ago, I was walking up the street here. I think I was headed to the 40 Watt Club. I don't remember. Uh, not, not at night. Um, <laughs> Pat's laughing of at me. I, I, okay. <laughs> um, to, um, and I overheard this young man sitting in front of trapeze say to a person on the other end of the line on the phone, you know, that it's better than Champagne. And so my assumption was Champagne, Illinois, not the Champagne, the drink. And I smiled and I kept walking. Thank you. Keep walking. Keep talking. And in retrospect, while the comparison certainly made me feel good and very proud, it's not what we do to be better than, whether it's Chapel Hill or Gainesville, Florida or Salt Lake or Berkeley. You can fill in the blank. But how we direct our efforts towards improving who we are now, moving towards a greater vision of ourselves 
to ensure the transmission of a better Athens than what she is today. So the individuals who gave their effort to the unification effort, first the Quality Growth Task Force that Pat mentioned, then the city and county officials who were willing to give the notion another try, it was the fourth, the citizens they appointed to be the Unification Commission, a, an amazing group of people who I'm so honored to know and to have been able to work with, and the volunteers who assisted that effort, and there were many, many, many volunteers. The newly elected mayor and commission, along with staff and more volunteers, as Doc said, who took theory to practice during countless hours, many long meetings. If you think our meetings were long, you should have been at their meetings the first year. And those who followed them to mold, shape, and create a better government, one out of two, for the benefit of the community as a whole. These actions personified the Athenian oath to encourage a high level of engagement and civic duty towards something greater. So we must endeavor to honor their efforts, not only with this collective thank you, but with a promise to continue the work. Earlier, we all stood and recited the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation, and it's a great one. Let us now recite the Athenian Oath. Let us pledge to strengthen that civic duty, either alone or with others, to continually perform good deeds, to be like Menches on behalf of our beloved Athens, so that she may continue to bring us pride and the respect of others. The oath is on the back. I'm going to read it, and if you feel like reading it along with me, I invite you to do that, and I think it would be a really lovely testament if all of us did it. So the Athenian oath. We will never bring disgrace on this our city by an act of dishonesty or cowardice. We will fight for the ideals and sacred things of the city, both alone and with many. We will revere and obey the city's laws and will do our best to incite a like reverence and respect in those above us who are prone to annul them or set them at naught. We will strive increasingly to quicken the public sense of civic duty Thus, in all these ways, we will transmit this city, not only, not less, but greater and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. Thank you. Um, Jeff also gave me an opportunity to provide some thanks if I wanted to do that. And as I thought about that, I thought, well, we'd be here long into the night, not into the next day and the next. Um, and I'd miss somebody in doing that, and so I don't really want to do that. Um, there are so many people, all of you here, of course, and many others, who've played such a significant role in who I am today and the accomplishments that I'm so proud of myself and, and the community. So I think what I just want to do simply is just say to you that um, where it started for me was with Carol Williams, who led me to Pat, C. Patrick, who hired me to work with the unification, and as I said, an amazing group of people who I'm so grateful to know. Um, and the many volunteers that I worked with and allowed me the opportunity to um, be a part of something so fascinating and satisfying, an experience that changed my life and the trajectory of it in so many ways, um, not the least of which is the privilege of standing here before you um, and thanking you for the opportunity to serve and to be a part of history in this community and this very special day. So um, thank you all so much again for being here. Thank you for the work that you do for this community. Thank you for being like Menches. Thank you for your support of me and all the others. And, um, um, and I was gonna say something else and it's left, so that's a good time for me to just sit down. It is a beautiful day. When Jeff called me to tell me about this event, I was shocked. I could not believe it had been 25 years. I was just totally surprised. And uh, I was very appreciative that we were remembering it, that we were celebrating what our community did then. And it led me to have a lot of different thoughts about what that meant and what kind of people would take on that job. 
it was a huge job. Uh, and only looking back can you really fully appreciate what happened during that time. Um, the first thing I think that's the most important, we've alluded to it a number of times, is it was citizen driven. It was citizen driven from the very beginning. The request came from citizens. Uh, citizens worked together on the development of the charter. Uh, we can't forget the Carl Benson Institute of Government because it kept us very high handed, very high standards. It was developed in one of the most important sources of government information in our state. So um, that led us from the very beginning. Uh, out of the 37 candidates that ran, I loved to, I, I, it, I took a look at who we really were, what we represented. First, we started out with a farmer named Charles Carter, a retired cook named Mary Moore, a Harvard lawyer, John Barrow, hardware owner, businessman and veteran lawmaker, Hugh Logan, a nurse named Marilyn Farmer, uh, a wife, a housewife named Cardi Kilpatrick, who we all know is much more than that, who had served on the Board of Education, so she brought a lot of knowledge from our community, a state leader of the co uh, Cooperative Extension who knew every single county in the state and government and had great ties with the state, uh, an insurance agent that brought a sincere um, knowledge of his community that had often not been included, I felt, um, the county uh, presence. Uh, I know I'm, I hope I'm not forgetting someone, but I'm sure I am because there are not 10 there. But anyway, as uh, Ken Jordan, oh my God, our, um, yes, our Colonel of Engineering, uh, who we could not have done without his, um, you know, he looked at those things, he reminded, he was the parallel of Calvin Bridges on the old city council who always had infrastructure in mind. So anyway, it was a great, you know, it was a great group of people. And um, when I think about that group of people, I, I want to share these thoughts. We were really brave. As a community and as individuals, we ventured into territory that we had no idea was so complicated was fraught with legal, um, legal questions and technical problems and, and personnel problems that very few people had really addressed as idealistically and as well as we intended to do. And we did, we succeeded. But um, we were challenged. Um, elected officials willing to honor the idealistic charter that had been written. People came to us after um, unification and they said, look, you know, in there is this clause where you can take it to the legislature and change anything you want. This is really, this was really, you know, this was really impossible maybe, so you don't have to worry about doing, uh, rect rectifying 600 laws that were conflicting in less than a year. You, know, you don't have to worry about that really. But we were committed. That group of people said, no, our people voted on this charter. Everybody knows what's in this charter. We have got to honor this charter. And they went to work. And they spent many hours. Uh, it became a joke in a way. But I felt it was a source of pride that we spent the time it took to address those issues in a way that was open, transparent, that took the time, but also honored that deadline. Um, we were courageous. We could have just said, okay, the government and the county used to do it this way, we'll keep doing it that way, we, the city used to, we could have just chosen between county way, city way, but we did not. We were determined to create a government that was truly new and prepared for the next century. The fact that 2000 was coming up, I think inspired us in a, in a very important way. And so we didn't just, we explored all of the options that were out there. We looked at the newest technology. We looked at the long-term solution to problems we were experiencing. And, uh, and we went to work. Um, we were collaborative. We broke our community up into uh, all of the things that we had to do into 10 groups. And, we, and our staff 
our wonderful, wonderful staff led our citizens and one commissioner was assigned to each one of those groups and these people took on some of the hardest, most controversial issues a community um, faces and they did it in a very, very short period of time when you look at what we did. It was really amazing. Um, it was probably one of the hardest and proudest moments in most of our lives um, because we knew what we were doing and we did our, we gave our best. But the other thing that happened is all our, we found out that our citizenry was filled with experts, not only from the university, but people who were helping people all over the nation came and spent that time with us. Um, and, and they contributed greatly. We implemented in this time when we could have ignored it, we implemented one of the finest recycling programs in the nation that paid itself off in less than five years when people told us it would take at least 10 for them to make a profit. Within five years, with, before five years they were. Um, most important, we really became unified in the way we were looking at our community. I feel like that that is something that is very hard to sustain. And uh, that's the challenge I feel like that we really need to be nurturing every day in government is to be sure we are sustaining the citizen involvement the, um, and putting in place those tools that were really needed. Um, to make sure that our citizens are getting a community with a vision for the future that contains what is best about us and brings on those things that are most needed to maintain those things. There are a few people that I have to recognize. Um, one of them is standing way in the back and has been recognized nationally by the most prestigious group of auditors in our nation and that is John Culpepper, who um, was a wonderful, wonderful leader in our government. Um, there are all of our department heads that are standing around here now were crucial to us then. James Alford is here, and the work that was done, Barbara um, Timmons, um, the work that was done with personnel was just huge. It was really huge. I could not have done my work without the partner that Mae Walters was for me. She gave me a perspective and advice and wisdom and a calmness <laughs> that I really needed every day. And so I really appreciate that very much. Um, it, was a, it was a great honor to be a part of this, to be a part of history. But more than being a part of this, uh, I am proud of our people our community, our citizens, the courage, the strength, and the determination that they showed to take this huge step at a time and get prepared for the 21st century. And I'm proud that our legacy is one that I believe did that. Thank you. That's okay, Jeff, don't worry about it. That's the way the county used to be anyway. A little contrary. That's why I have to do it to keep, 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 it, keep it down. Good afternoon. Uh, and I do love the county because I lived in it. So it, I, I have the unique, being in, in a unique position, I happen to be the mayor pro tem with all of these mayors with the exception of Cardi who came in late. So I've had the opportunity to really work closely with each one of them. And that has truly been an honor. Each one of them are unique in their own ways. And I, and, and, but they all had one thing that was most important, Athens, Clark County. That was their first and foremost challenge was to make sure that Athens, Clark County was treated fairly. As we celebrate 25 years of unification, and nowhere I'm not gonna be long, I wrote it on the back of the invitation. I stand here to be, be basically be the bridge that represents I was old city before we unified this government, and as uh, and and I thank Tom Chastain for defeating me in, unif in unification. Had he not defeated me, I would have lost my job as a teacher. 
And because those first two years, the work really was done that forged what unification is all about. It was those first two years. Those people literally worked almost every day. And I know being a school teacher, they weren't gonna let me off that much to keep, and keep my job too. So I, I think, you know, you know, losing an election, you think, God, that's terrible. No, that was great for me. But two years later, I was, had the opportunity to come back. And as I began my 24th year with this unified government, either I'm crazy or something, but we continue to work in that manner. But the cross, you know, I really represent the crossing over from the old city to the old county to become the unified government. I thank Jeff for the opportunity to, to say a few words. This connection led us into this new territory that we call unification. Is unification perfect? No. You know, has it done all that we thought it would do? No. But one thing it has done, it has brought citizens together. Citizens are more involved in this community than any community that I know. And it is so wonderful to know that th we are only a phone call away. Most of the time it's Walmart, where you usually meet somebody that says, you got a minute, and I tell them no, give me five, and I take out my pencil and paper and we start writing. But that's what we are really about in this, in this community. The governance of this community has been marvelous, really. If, when I looked at the budgets that we had in the old city and the budgets that we had in the old county, we probably would be twice as expensive as we are. We found ex uh, uh, what they call savings and scales of, of savings because of bringing two governments together. And the fun part about it is we only have to fuss with each other. Instead of fighting old city, old county, we just say, let's fuss with, with each other. And we, we do a pretty good job of that. If you had been with us yesterday, you would have gotten a taste of that. But we worked hard to bring this, this unification together. This community is to be congratulated on having the foresight and the willingness to take this challenge on. There are only eight unified governments in the state of Georgia right now. A few more places are heading in that direction because of that savings, that economy of scale. But this government is far superior, and I can say that by having and being involved with a few of those other unified governments in what we do and how we do it. Athens is the model by which people look to see what are you gonna do next? Gwen alluded to the recycling and there are other things that we've done that people come to this city to find out what do we do. Even to how do we do a farmer's market ordinance right out in front of City Hall. That's how we do these things. We do them with the citizens in mind. And because of that, we want, I want to say congratulations to all of those persons, Mr. Pat Allen in particular, who led the charge that started this whole process. And to a person that uh, some of you will remember, a gentleman by the name of Larry Blunt. It was very important in this process that we have this unification process today. And you know he will be remembered for his work and his endeavors with that. And again, Pat, thank you. And to the citizens of Athens, Clark County, thank you for allowing us to be your servants. I realize that it's probably appropriate for the first mayor of the unified government to recognize and appreciate my last mayor, Dwayne Chambers, and I'm so sorry I did not recognize you. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's a wonderful day to be in Athens, as WGAU's uh, H. Randolph Holder would have said 25 years ago to start our day. Uh, 38 years ago, when I ran to be the first Athens City Council woman, a part of my platform was, to, was support of a consolidation of our city and county governments. On election, I became a part of that annual wrangling over whether the city of Athens or Clark County provided which service at what cost to our citizens and who paid for it and how. One of the most contentious of those services was our fire protection. 
We consolidated our fire department prior to consolidation during my term on city council. When I became tax commissioner in 1985, I was responsible for a uh, county office that contracted with the city of Athens to collect Athens property tax. And I was still a, a, an advocate of consolidation. Uh, now, 26 years later, I became mayor of the unified government of Athens, Clark County, and I'm still an advocate of consolidation, or as was coined later, a better word, unification. We've come a long way. I've seen firsthand the positive results and the hard work done met by many here today and others who could not be with us. I, along with you, and I, along with you, am a beneficiary of the vision and work of countless people who are out front in the effort, and hundreds whose names many of us will never know who worked tireless behind the scenes 25 years ago, and those who continue to provide services for our citizens today. You've heard from a number of elected officials today, but citizens, including many of you who were, were, drive, were the driving force behind a successful unification effort, which was truly grassroots. Town meetings, as uh, it's already been alluded to, town meetings and work groups were the norm during the process. Over 150 volunteers met once a week for four weeks to arrive at a consensus to become a basis for the charter. Over 300 people attended public forum, a public forum to discuss the resolution to create the uh, Charter Commission. And we owe a debt of gratitude to all of those folks. One of the key people involved in that effort is Pat Allen. Uh, who, who chaired the Unification Committee back then. Pat also graciously emceed the um, ceremony uh, 25 years ago when we swore in our um, new officers, and as he is doing, chairing for us today. And uh, I want to thank you, Pat, not only for what you did 25 years ago, but for the last 25 years, and what I know you're gonna be doing probably for another 25 years for our community. <laughs> Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that Gwen recognized some specific individuals, and I, I'm not going to try because I couldn't possibly thank everybody who was involved in this effort. It would take the rest of the day. But again, uh, she reminded you, and I remind you again to look at, at your uh, program because it lists the groups and individuals who were, um, who were very much involved in the process. As unification was approved, elected officials had plenty to do. Uh, at, in the first two years alone, Merrill, under Merrill Looney's leadership, the commission adopted 300 ordinances, including ones that reconcile building codes, zoning and historic preservation ordinances, business license ordinance, combined solid waste, personnel system, and municipal court. Since unification, we've had 34 commissioners and five mayors and three managers. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize our current manager, um, who I'm calling our temporary manager. He's got just a few weeks to go, Alan Reddish, who has, who has served our community so well for almost 15 years. We're gonna, we're gonna miss you, Alan, and can't wait to see what your next career is gonna be. Uh, today's celebration is not just about looking back at an event 25 years ago, it's also about looking at the last 25 years the, of the community and what we've done uh, to get to the point we are today. We've added more employees since Unif court, unification, certainly, but unification has allowed us to be efficient in providing services. In 25 years, our ratio of employees to citizens has remained stable at around 14 employees for every thousand citizens. Financially, we've considered to manage our finances responsibly and to make them more equitable in the community. In the late 1980s, former city uh, residents had a property tax rate of 19.19 mills, while Clark County's mill, which uh, unincorporated, Clark County's millage rate was 13.73. Today, Athens Clark County residents are taxed at only 13.95, just slightly above that lowest figure from prior to consolidation. And yet, police, fire, leisure services, emergency management, building inspection, planning, public works, and, and utilities and other key services are provided equitably across our community now. Those millage rate, rates and staffing figures remain despite a blooming, excuse it's blooming as well as booming, uh, population growing from 88,000 in 1990 to over 120,000 today. That's a 37% increase over the last 25 years. Unification is about opportunities. Opportunities to avoid the turf battles that we saw in the past, uh, to avoid uh, service duplication. It's about energizing the workforce, thinking outside of the box, long-term planning, regional initiatives, and having one decision-making board. 
those visionary leaders 25 years ago who saw the tremendous challenges ahead, uh, which we've, we have experienced those challenges that they were uh, anticipating. We've had the development of regional reservoirs, transportation networks, and development of Highway 316. We've had droughts, recessions, uh, state and federal funding cuts with the expectations that we do more with less money. Um, we've, we've developed comprehensive, a comprehensive plan and partnered in efforts with the University of Georgia on numerous uh, activities. We've dealt with increased public safety and judicial needs and countless other unexpected demands. These visionary leaders who helped us to unify saw a key, a key element to address these problems was a local government organization and structure capable of speaking as one voice for all residents. And we've done that. There's no bickering between elected officials and departments of different governments. It's not to say we don't bicker among ourselves sometimes. And as Harry mentioned, if you'd been there yesterday, you would have found that we do our bickering with each other uh, behind closed doors sometimes. But uh, we, we did have some citizens to, to observe it with us yesterday. We, we had a, um, uh, an all-day retreat to work on our um, goals and objectives for next year. Interestingly, the 1980 resolution also noted that Athens Clark County community would be more attractive to potential economic and industrial prospects if it had one local organization capable of unified leadership. We've, we've, <coughs> excuse me, we've proven this to be the case. I'm sorry, long-winded people and the weather gets me fried out <laughs> and I'm the long-winded person. Uh, we've proven this to be the case. Examples are the development of an, an internal economic development department along with our recently streamlined plans, uh, plans review process, the decision of Caterpillar and other entities to locate in our, in our county. I, don't, I believe it would have been very difficult for us to attract a Caterpillar if it had to deal with the city of Athens for water and sewer, uh, go through other processes for, for athens Clark County as well as dealing with a second county, Bocconi. This community set a foundation 25 years ago with the decision to unify the city and county governments. That foundation's proven to be sta a stable one that's paved the way for a, for a well-run government that sets the example for others around Georgia and the nation. We, now we all share a responsibility of transforming Athen or transmitting athens Clark County, as the Athenian Oath says, and as, as we uh, recited together with Heidi, that we will transmit our community greater and more beautiful to the next generation as those leaders and citizens did for us in 1980. They did their part, now it's our turn. Thank you everyone. There were 15 hardworking individuals on the Unification Commission. I've seen six of them here. We all just wave at all of us so people can identify you. Yeah. Good, thank you. One, one more historical note. In 1991, this very ribbon that stretched from the courthouse <laughs> fell. Um, and uh, on the stage was then University of Georgia President Chuck Knapp, who reattached the ribbon with the comment he was glad that the university could once more come to the aid of the, the governments in this community. <laughs> Talking about a reenactment, Jeff, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Speaking of the university, my, which was my most recent employee, I'd be remiss without acknowledging, as, as Gwen has alluded to, the strong support that uh, the Unification Commission and the community received from uh, the Institute for Community and Area Development, now called the Fanning Institute, for the facilitation and coordination and really design of the process, and the legal and, and, and right, the charter writing from the Carl Vinson Institute of Government. Laura, Jennifer, thank you uh, on behalf of those of your predecessors that we could not have done it without that strong support. Thank you. Well, well, historic events um, are often memorialized, and um, you, that's appropriate. Ribbons get discarded, and the speeches are forgotten. So I think it's appropriate for our community to memorialize uh, this event, uh, the one 25 years ago, uh, with something today. Next month, a granite marker is going to be installed right behind me uh, here in this area. And perhaps it will remind future generations of the courage uh, and the vision that uh, our predecessors had in creating this government. Today, we don't have that mark. It'll be next month. But we have a rendition of it. Gwen, how about the you, Heidi, Doc? Y'all show what it says, and I will. That's what it's going to look like, pure granite.
and it's going to read on January the 14th, 1991, the, the first elected offices of the unified government of athens Clark County took their oaths of office in this area after a citizen's referendum on August 7th, 1990, approved the unification of the city of Athens and Clark County governments. So that's, come see it later on. Well, we're through. Well, thank you for coming. Um, if you're interested in seeing any historical documents about the unification process or other information about that, they're on the athens Clark County website at AthensClarkCounty.com slash ACC25. Um, and I also need to thank Jeff Montgomery. Jeff Montgomery right back. looks like Brad Pitt. I know Jeff. Put all this together. And uh, thank you, Jeff. So please, uh, we have a reception behind us in the Georgian room. We ask you to please join us there. Uh, if anyone would like a commemorative lapel pin, there'll be some of those at the reception. And um, we just thank you for coming. See you inside.